But ladies and gentlemen, crypto seems to be back. I mean, every single time I look at prices right now, they've seemed to gone up again. But I'd say the absolute nicest part of it all is that coins like Chainlink, some of our most major investments, and also some of the already biggest coins are up with massive numbers. Chainlink being up today 20% I think sets a precedent for a lot of other major altcoins. To elaborate on that, we earlier talked about Bitcoin breaking out and Ethereum having a sort of breakout. But while I'd say those moves are not yet absolutely major, if we're looking at things like the SMP, we can clearly see that since it broke its all time high and was just going absolutely nuts over the past couple of days, and I already showed you guys that most likely Bitcoin would follow suit, now that Bitcoin is slowly trending back up again, that altcoin might very very soon follow with some massive runs across the board and again one way that can be seen is usually that some of the more major altcoins are already having some bigger numbers age bar here is up a little bit you know and some of these coins are up some some tiny tiny numbers but it's generally just that people switch from mostly being excited about bitcoin to mostly being excited about altcoins and i'd say the most prominent part is when bitcoin tops out maybe at 100 130k maybe even higher uh, who exactly knows so probably a few months from now but usually there's just mostly a difference between when altcoins peak and bitcoin peaks and i kind of think it'll go along the lines of bitcoin right now still is kind of king and some of the smaller more obscure altcoins but in a little while and that's kind of what we're potentially seeing some hints of right now as they're getting hotter and hotter again as Chainlink now is popping off solana is doing really well some of my favorite coins like aos are doing nice but you know some of the major altcoins will follow suit pretty quickly which then will just go into our usual cycle of large caps um, first and then alts as in smaller and smaller altcoins this is not the perfect path that i wanted to show you but it's the path to altcoin season and right now it seems we're still in phase one right but it seems that we potentially might skip a massive ethereum run i mean you could argue that out of a lot of these altcoins ethereum is actually up one of the most as it's extremely close to its all-time high uh, ethereum and bnb anyway you could argue that ethereum this time around is going to be left behind because we've got the ethereum etf deadlines coming in hot on may 23rd and 24th so you know less than a week week away some have said that ethereum might actually bleed ever so slightly if uh, which will probably will get denied but once more my personal thesis stands along the lines of if the smp is pushing hard so hard and from all our analysis even some of the past a bitcoin all-time high usually follows an smp all-time high and similarly a peak usually follows um you know a bitcoin peak usually follows the smp peak but then i think bitcoin previously tops out about a year after the smp does i showed you this all the way back here when was this let's quickly check this out uh, this was december 15th when we talked about the smp probably skyrocketing past its all-time high and bitcoin following suit which obviously a few months later it did. And I still hold all of this quite dearly. But if you're wondering, I'd say right now, some of the news that's been popping off that people are really excited about for Chainlink is Link completed their test with JP Morgan, Franklin Templeton, BNY Mellon, and other major US banks to accelerate the tokenization of funds. And I think, still think so, that over the next few months, a new sector that will really pop off is partially just RWA, but more importantly, it's these major financial institutions coming into crypto by tokenizing things we do not fully yet understand. And when I say that, I mean, we don't really know what they're going to go for as the sector is pretty much undiscovered. Yes, BlackRock has a pretty huge tokenization fund, right? But what exactly that will entail we will only figure out as these guys start uh, implementing and as these guys start you know accelerating their processes and i guess chainlink right now is helping some of these major institutions uh, facilitate this acceleration but you have to understand that right now we ourselves have a concept of where crypto can go over the next few months or years we have a concept of how big it can get but you got to understand you got to switch everything you knew up the moment that major banks, major institutions, etc., all join the game. 
Think back, right? We can think of how AI would look like in a few years, but realistically, you actually can't because usually, similarly with computers, right? Usually these things work in a pretty strange exponential way where you have a certain expectation and until oh, somebody new finds something or somebody finds something new and all of a sudden the curve goes from looking like this, you know, slightly upwards and good to basically up in the game and looking like this. And I think the similar thing is going to happen with crypto where if right now some of these major, major players are joining, it's really hard for us to comprehend how quickly things can grow because they've just started rolling up the hachukachungas, the, the, the trains. And so again, right now, my personal expectation is to still just hold on to some of the coins of sectors we almost are certain of will pop off. And that, for example, includes AI coins, which again, ever since I talked about it, are just some of the most amazing coins. And I keep talking about them in my videos because it just makes so much sense. Some of my favorite ones are Fetch, AOS, RSS3, which has fallen a little bit recently, I think. I still think meme coins right now are one of the better sectors because again, if Bitcoin decides to go for a little poo poo, they still will probably keep doing really well. But if I had to take it a little bit more broad, I'd say that right now, some of the really small altcoins I, I wouldn't really go with right now. In, in this time period, right? I am mostly excited about big altcoins. Let's say Bitcoin and big altcoins. AI coins and meme coins. That's my like my four of yes. Right. What I'm not so excited about many small altcoins sectors that are not really hot at the moment. So a lot of DeFi subcategories are not as hot right now. Gaming is not hot right now. RWA is, but it's hard to figure out which coins on those do a nice a couple other ones are OK, but it's not really popping off. Point just being small altcoins are not in a good position this week, last three, four, six weeks even already. But if Bitcoin persists with the run we're seeing right now, a matter of fact, if Ethereum ETFs get approved, I do expect a massive run for some of these smaller coins, and I will be transitioning back into a lot of them. Point being here, I've sold off a lot of all coins in the couple of like last couple of days here. Many will think it's stupid, but it's because I'd rather have some of the cash right now to see what the next trend is going to be and invest hard. Uh, but also, again, a lot of people don't get this. But for me, the last couple of months have been so insane that to some extent, it's still worth sometimes taking profits here and there. And if you're not in profit yet, do not worry. We're just starting with everything and taking this profit for the most part is just making sure you have reserve funds to get back in harder once the market starts pumping crazier. Because even I personally don't see it at th this point, right, as a, oh, let me get out of the market type a moment. I see it as a let's reorient, sit down, start thinking about what's going to pop off next and pump our money in so hard. Again, I'm not your financial advisor. Can't tell you what to do and what is smart. These are just my thoughts. What I can tell you, however, is that my favorite crypto exchange, uh, at least for the last like four or so years, has been Bybit. If you haven't checked it out yet, I've got a link down below. It's the exchange I use for all my personal trading. And if Bybit doesn't work for you, I think another exchange that works for a lot of people in a lot more countries is Deepcoin. Mostly, again, for derivatives trading, but hey, you'll figure it out as you go along. I know a lot of people from yeah countries that Bybit does not operate in use Deepcoin. So again, I've left linked to both of these down below. And again, to continue on to the story, I think too many people are very much focused on just the day to day. They're looking at BlackRock's daily Bitcoin flow at zero and they think, oh, you see, this is bad or stop, the excitement is gone. But they fail to think about slightly further and fail to realize that ETFs, first of all, have ebbs and flows. It comes up, it comes down, but generally speaking, the trend is upwards. But I mostly laugh because people look at this daily flow and don't realize just how much money it actually is and which institutions are buying it because again these etfs are just one part of the entire ecosystem of cryptocurrencies people forget that that etfs are not everything and until really quite recently you had none and there's also the futures etfs etc cetera, etc cetera. and again this have to also be offset by people actually doing some hedging in the sense that ah that's not even getting to that. there's a lot of hedging strategies which is basically that they buy it in a certain sense and sell it in another um, theoretically speaking, they could short or long on one end of the market and then buy or sell it on the other. For the most part, though, it's buying and shorting. But again, that's a story for a different day. The story here being 
The amount of institutions that are hoarding up masses is really crazy to me. And I've been looking at some of these big institutions, you know, time after time again now and realizing, damn, that's actually really wild. Just now the announcement with Chainlink, you can see the institutions that are looking to get into this sector. Don't look at the dollar amounts for now. Think about the dollar amounts that it accrues over the next 12, 24, or whatever months. Some of these institutions are perhaps trillion dollar industries, so to speak. It takes a little bit of time to get the ball rolling. And most of these guys, they don't think about where to be at in the next you know, six to eight months, which a lot of us are doing. They think about where they're gonna be at over the next five, 10, 20 years. And so when they invest in this sector, most of these major funds, they're not doing it for another couple of days, weeks, haha, <laughs> like us cra crazy traders. They're thinking about where can I place my money or part of our money into, that will do well or is a proper hedge for decades to come because that's more the, for the most part how these banks and how these guys work if you're managing money and you're not actively trading in a certain sense which most of these guys aren't your plan for the most part is not to get out of it in the next few days or weeks no they're putting it here putting it here because they expect this to do well over either again multiple months but mostly for basically the next cycle is what they're investing into and the point there being that a lot of these guys, which are going in now, will also not sell this Bitcoin top. Some people expect it, that the next big crash is going to be because institutions take profit hard. I don't think so. I think it's, again, going to be mostly us retail that are really going to wreck our charts again after another meme coin flop or something. But I think the institutions are probably going to really wreck us next cycle. And that's also when regulation is going to set in hard, et cetera, et cetera. This time, I think... It's going to be iffy wiffy. But anyway, the next big thing to watch out for is the Ethereum ETF decision coming out in the next few days. Understand institutions are going really, really hard. Some coins are already pumping because of it, but give it a little bit of time. And I think this is going to go really, really exponential. And I think our expectation curve has to be put up a little bit with all the guys that are joining the game. But yeah, I'm really excited. You guys know which coins I'm watching out for. That's about it.